Sound, Mind, and Body is brought to you in part by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash inbound. You'll find over 180,000 titles to choose from and to listen to through your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Support Sound, Mind, and Body by visiting audibletrial.com slash inbound. And welcome to Sound Mind and Body, a podcast where we talk about the many different ways to stay healthy, balanced, and well of mind, body, and spirit in today's crazy world with a dash of woo woo. I'm your host, Sheila Melody, and I'm so very honored and thrilled to have today's guest here. Not only is she an iconic, award winning actress on TV, film, and stage. She is also an accomplished director, an author, and a former United Nations Goodwill Ambassador. She is a timeless beauty and one of the world's most recognized and admired stars. My guest today is Linda Gray. Whoa. Welcome, nice Linda. introduction. Thank you. I was like, did I do all that? <laughs> you certainly did. Wow. And I am, thank, thank you again for schlepping and coming to our studio here. It's really a pleasure. It really is. Well, we're so excited to have you here. Thank you. I learned a lot about you by reading your book. It's called The Road to Happiness is Always Under Construction. Don't you love that title? I absolutely love that title. Because everybody's life is under construction, I think. That is true. But I feel like some people, like at a certain point, they go, well, I'm okay right here where it is. But I feel like you are continuously opening up and doing new things and, you know, reinventing. And Well, it's because I, I, I think I was born with an infusion of curiosity. I think at birth, <laughs> this happened. I want to know about things. I want to know about people and travel and food. I want to, it's like, bring it on. I want to experience it. So curiosity has always been one of the words that I vibe to. Oh, I love that. Me too. Curiosity. <laughs> well, let's start at kind of the beginning. I read a very interesting story Um in there that when you were you were doing some modeling and when you were 20 years old a magazine editor rejected you as a model <laughs> it's one of my favorite stories because um i received a rejection letter I'd, i had um put myself into for an interview for glamour girl it was for glamour magazine and i was 20 so you can imagine how long ago that was oh <laughs> anyway God. anyway so I thought wow this is great I'm going to submit my little picture and do all that anyway I received this uh, rejection letter and the editor said uh, maybe if you do something with your hair and makeup one day you may amount to something <laughs> and, and so you know my my feisty little self came running out and I thought wait a minute and I was going to throw it literally I was going to throw that letter in the trash because I thought well how dare she and I got kind of cranky and I thought well wait a minute this is one person's opinion and I'm not going to let her dictate and two words came flowing out of my mouth I thought watch me lady I love it. Watch me. I didn't know who she was. I just didn't like her. <laughs> and, and I bet so, she she got hers, right? You know. But here's the funny part. And it's it's like so, you know, we talk about full circle and how things come about. Mm -hmm. So when I wrote the book, uh the uh editor said, um, well, we would love to put that letter in the book. And I thought, well, that's kind of weird, but um, but rejection has always been a part of an actor's life and a model's life. We're rejected all the time. Most people have a couple rejections maybe in their life, but not like us. So right. We're just kind of used to it. <laughs> but mine came early, and and it was it's framed on my desk. For oh my like gosh, fifty fifty uh, ish years, it's still there. I so love it. I look at it and I go. You know what, lady? This it's one opinion, and you're not going to dictate my life. And watch me came out of that. So, go back to the book. 
oh, writing the book. And they said, we want that. But we have to get permission from her. What? I said, oh, my God. You know, I, don't, I honestly didn't know whether she was still alive. God bless her. Uh-huh. So, I, so I said, okay, well, it was Glamour Magazine, you know, 50-ish years ago. And so they said, okay, great. They found her. Oh, my goodness. Found her. Really? In Idaho. And she's <gasps> 90 years old. Oh, my gosh. And so the editors had to get permission. So we just couldn't throw. So I thought you'd just put it out. Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, really, from that long ago. Publishers and book stuff, I didn't know. Anyway, uh, she said um, that that was her, and so we sent her the letter and said, you know, this is what we want to put in the book. Do do we have your permission? She said, oh, of course you have my permission. But she said, I didn't write that. My assistant must have. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) And I just smiled. I thought, God bless you, sweetheart. Oh, my God. And I thought, you know, so we told her what I did, and I sent her a book and signed it to her. And so it was, to me, it was like the most miraculous little uh, full circle. Full circle and feeling good all around. Yeah, it was great. I love that. And so every time I look at her, I, I go... But thank the, you. I like to thank her for, yeah. you know, she might have just inspired that feisty me to go, yeah, watch me, lady. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's know. the thing. It's like, take those things, is say thank you, and say thank you for helping me to grow yes. and to go, you know what? I love the whole watch me. <laughs> that is great. Well, we've, I've been rejected so many times. I, I mean, I think I was rejected. Oh, I know what it was when I started out modeling, and I wanted to speak. I wanted to Oh, speak. you wanted to actually well, have I words, say, say words. Oh, no. Models don't speak. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> what? What do you do? Who are you? Wait a minute. You might be another watch me kind of person, <laughs> you know? And and they thought of us as uh, coat hangers back then. Oh, my we gosh. We could stand there and look pretty, but no speaking. Mm-mm. <laughs> you don't speak. No. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and bathing suit. Uh, I was 23 and uh, I was rejected because I was 23 doing swimsuits. Because you were too old? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. And, um, you know, I mean, all my life, these crazy yeah. things have happened. And uh, I just keep coming back. Going, Wait a minute. Wait, I'm over here. Watch me. Don't tell me I can't do something. Oh, that is amazing. I will, I'll surprise you and I'll go watch me. And here we go again. So Here we go again. <laughs> yep. Never ending. Right. Exactly. Well, and then you didn't even actually, I was also surprised to learn that you didn't get the part in Dallas, your iconic role, until you were 38 years old. <gasps> Was and I? <laughs> yeah, that's what it says. And I'm like, wait a minute. You know, a lot of maybe actresses who might be listening, you know what, don't give up, you know, because b- back, you know, you were thinking, okay, I'm, I'm sure they're hard with women in the business, especially too, once you get past your 20s. So what was that like getting that job at 38, and then you're all of a sudden, oh my gosh. Did you think it was going to be that big of a show? No. And I never think about age either. I mean, I never yes. would, I never walked in and went, oh dear, I'm 38, maybe I'm too old for that. Never. I, I don't, love to it. this day, I think I'm 12. You know, <laughs> I mean, I'm like, wait, what are you talking about? Age. I honestly never thought about it. I told you the other day on the phone that um, they had this list in Hollywood. That oh, yeah. It's like, when do you, the people that started a career later in their life. Right. And I was number three on <laughs> <laughs> I said, you mean they have lists for people that started older? I mean, oh, I just uh, things like that just uh, throw me. I think it's well, very it's funny. inspirational. I think to people, you know, because the people doing it know that it, it's inspirational to the people doing it, you know, and and it's just a, a fun fact for the people who are watching because they don't understand what it's like to go through that rejection and rejection and you know think that oh I'm. I'm going to give up because I'm getting too old or whatever. And, you know, it just, I think it, it proves to inspire people that are doing it. I think so. You know, I'd never, um, when I went in to read for Dallas, I was doing 
prior to that, I was doing a series with Norman Lear, my hero in life. I adore him. Oh, really? And the casting director um, that did that was doing the show, um, she was hired to do the minor parts on Dallas. Uh huh. And um, she kept begging them to see me. She said, "Do you know Linda Gray?" And they said, "No, nobody knew me." And uh, she said, "Please see her." for the role of Sue Ellen. And they said, well, we already have our our eyes uh, and our minds set on Mary Fran, who ended up being Bob Newhart's wife. Oh, So they already had the Victoria was brunette. She was blonde. Mary Fran was blonde. So they really wanted a blonde and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, uh, they said, okay, we will see her at five o'clock on Friday. Oh, my God! That's a death in Hollywood. <laughs> it is. <laughs> like, That's oh like, you God. know, okay, we'll squeeze you in at <laughs> yeah, the last like minute. Friday, everyone wants to go home and well, all this stuff. They're tired. They're yeah. tired. They're cranky. They don't want. And there was no script because Sue Ellen was never supposed to be important. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So they didn't even have a proper script. They just sort of scratched something together for me to read. It was a one-sided phone call where JR is to call her and say he won't be home for the uh, John Ross's birthday. Uh-huh. And we know where he he was <laughs> rat that he was so she's supposed to react and so i read this sort of invented half a phone call mm-hmm. and i got to my car it was weird and you know they wanted me out of there it's like okay read this lady and get out you know, it's like <laughs> five o'clock i want to go home and um so that's what happened i, I got to my car and i thought for some weird female intuition thing Mm -hmm. i've got this job really and i did (laughs) oh my gosh so like when did they call you like the next week yeah they they called you know it was friday night late by then and so the following week i got the call that is so cool i love it and then when did they decide to make give sue ellen more of a a role as you started doing the part is it well? There was still no no dialogue. I was referred to lovingly as the brunette on the couch because I had nothing to say. I just sat there. <laughs> I was like the brunette on the couch. Great. I mean, the name Sue Ellen was in the script, but nobody even called me Sue Ellen. I could have been anybody, the tennis pro or the what the masseuse, somebody. <laughs> I was just there sitting on the couch. And so uh, I remember they they had this living room scene and they were on. A shot of Larry, a close up, and he was going on and on him, a pain in the neck kind of guy. And I thought, oh, who would marry that guy? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it dawned on me, it would be me. That would be me. And I'm like, oh no, this is horrible. So I just, I thought, okay, they don't give me any dialogue. I'll just start doing some eye contact stuff. Okay. And I would just like, oh, I looked at Larry like with hatred, <laughs> like you awful, despicable human being. I am your wife. Why did I marry you? Anyway, all this inner inner dialogue and uh-huh. nothing outside because it didn't. There was nothing on the page for me. So then uh, we started bickering. We would have little little scenes and we'd start bickering. Uh huh. And he'd say, "So Ellen, the the button, the, sew this button on my shirt." I said, I don't sew buttons. That was all ad lib. <laughs> oh, really? At this time <laughs> because we, I had nothing to do. So anyway, long story short, um, CBS saw it, uh, saw the chemistry. Oh, cool! And there was chemistry. It was like a magic fairy dust sprinkled on the two of us. It was, it was chemistry, and you can't deny any uh-huh. of that. So off we went. Just the, we we're like the um, Bickersons. And you were having a fun time, right? It was absolutely fun. And we hated to tell everybody how much fun we were having (laughs) being these horrible people. (laughs) Exactly. I bet that was wonderfully fun. (laughs) It was great. Oh, my gosh. So you did that. And then the other thing about... So you become this amazing, iconic, you know, character that you kind of brought out of you and created and made the show, I think... That much better, right? It it made it that much better, and but no, you don't stop there. You want to direct as well. Yes. So not all actresses want to step into that role. That's a huge thing. So tell us a little about you know wanting to direct and being able to direct your first episode. Well. I, I really did want to direct, and Patrick and Larry were directing. And at that time, I was getting bored with Sue Ellen. 
Now, people say, how can you be bored with Sue Ellen? But I was drinking and having affairs and having affairs and drinking. And I thought, oh, <laughs> this is really boring me. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, my God, how much more of this do I have to do anyway? Uh, so the producer said, uh, I said, I'm tired of this. And if I get tired as an actor, mm-hmm. I know that the audience is going to pick up on it. Right. And they're going to say, mm, what's wrong here? So I said... Uh, you know, I told them, and they, they patronizingly said, and they patted me on the back, I'll never forget it. They said, but you do it so well. Oh, God. And I thought, oh. Uh. <laughs> anyway, um, so I started studying um, with a wonderful uh, French uh, director, Lillian Chauvin. Oh. And she's, you know, she's passed now, but she was so amazing. And man, did she work me. Really? She was really. She said, I'm not going to let you go and throw your hat in, you know, in the ring for if you don't know what you're doing. Right. I said, no, I don't want to do that. I want to know properly how to do everything. Break down the script and I know all the, everything. So I began studying with her. Oh my, my gosh. Spare time. And, in your spare yeah, time. Right. <laughs> and we'll go there in a minute. <laughs> so there wasn't a lot of that, but but she was tough. And um, so anyway, uh, end of year eight, uh, time for negotiations, renegotiations. Uh-huh. And so I said to them, I don't want any more money. I don't want, I'm happy. Everything's cool. All I want is one epi- to direct one episode in the next 52. Wow. And they were like, is that all you want? I said, yeah, that's it. That's all I want. They said, you're fired. What? <laughs> and I was like, oh, <gasps> that's not what I wanted to hear. <laughs> you rats. <laughs> oh my anyway, God. Yeah. It was it was it was brutal for me. And and I thought, oh, oh my gosh. That was not that was not good. That's like insulting. So anyway, at the end of season eight, um I talked to Larry and uh Larry said, well, I'll see you next season. And I said, Larry, I've been fired. They don't want me back because I want to direct one episode in the next 52. Oh. And so he went in, literally, God bless him. Um, he went in and he said, if she goes, I go. Oh, really? He said, there's magic here. Wow. What are you doing? Yes. You give her one show. So bless him. Oh. He went in and uh, and I got to direct. And I was very excited, very grateful to, to Larry. And uh, not so with the producers. Yeah, I was like, really? Mm. I'd be like, I'll show you <laughs> again. Watch, watch me. me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So anyway, if if people listening have seen Dallas, they know that most of the shows, two people on a couch, in an <laughs> office, in a bed, in a restaurant, <laughs> two people. Yeah. I open my script, first page, a costume ball on the island of Martinique. Oh, my God. I was like, wait a minute, what show, what, what show am I doing? Yeah, <laughs> right? really? And so I knew. I thought, okay, they're trying to bury me. Oh, you think they... Oh. <laughs> so I thought, and I bastards. had live German Shepherd dogs to deal with, and actors, and everyone in costume. Oh, my God. And the island of Martinique was Malibu, but still it was <laughs> like... Where are those two people in the the, the two the people in the couch? The bed, where, what happened to that? <laughs> so I thought, wow, that's what they're doing. And they wanted um, sunrise every morning. They wanted to prove that you that you couldn't do it. They made it as difficult as they could. Yeah. And I bet you showed them. Yes, ma'am. Yay! <laughs> it was great, and I felt really good. And Lillian was proud. My coach, she was wonderful and very. Um, Anyway, she was she was terrific, and wow. I, I, I and I did a good job, and then I did five more. Oh, you did? Yeah, yep. they let you do five more after yep. that. Yep, I love this. You are amazing, Linda. No, it's not that. It's you know, thank you. You for just saying took that, but... the challenge, and you stood up there, and you did it, and you and you got you know the education. You learned how, mm-hmm. but to step into that role with all those odds against you, I just so admire you. Thank you. Yeah, that was tricky, but I I did enjoy it, and you know they were they were received very well, so I was very proud. If you have the episodes that you directed, oh, I'd love to put those in the show notes. Okay, because we're gonna only watch those ones. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna take a break, and when we come back, we're gonna talk about all the other things you were doing while you were shooting Dallas and even beyond Dallas. Mm-hmm. 
On the next episode of Sound, Mind, and Body, I talk to Alicia Skye, who became an intuitive wellness coach and energy healer after she self-diagnosed her own stage three breast cancer at the age of 24. My pinky, as I was loofing, my pinky kind of grazed my breast. And as my pinky went across my breast, I felt this lump and in my mind's eye, in my intuition, the more I tuned in, I was able to see my vascular system and my breast tissue and all this stuff. And I saw this lump there and I knew, you know, just looking at the color in my, you know, in my aura, this is bad. This Uh is, this is cancer. I did chemotherapy. I did radiation. I had a handful of reconstructive surgeries. Mm -hmm. My boobs are awesome. (laughs) I feel like I'm part (laughs) droid. I've been rebuilt. They float. I never have to wear a bra. It's all good. (laughs) Awesome. (laughs) That's next week on Sound Mind and Body. Tim Edwards here with the Inbound Podcasting Network and producer of Sound Mind and Body. Hope you're enjoying Sheila's interview with the lovely Linda Gray. And we still have about 35 plus minutes of the interview still to come as soon as I'm done talking about Audible. Sheila mentioned earlier in the episode that not only is Linda a model, an actress, and a director, but she can also add the title author to her already impressive resume with her book titled The Road to Happiness is Always Under Construction which of course is available in Audible. All nine hours and 45 minutes of Linda in her own voice sharing deeply personal stories with wit, humor, and candor and reveals practical tips about maintaining a healthy lifestyle, how to strengthen and detoxify your body, liberate your mind, and uplift your soul. And for you, Sound Mind and Body listeners, the book is free. Simply click the link in the show notes to audibletrial.com forward slash inbound. That's audibletrial.com forward slash inbound. Sign up for your free 30-day membership trial and download Linda's audiobook. If you decide to cancel your membership for any reason, you get to keep the book. Simple as that. You have nothing to lose. Support Sound Mind and Body by visiting audibletrial.com forward slash inbound. We'll include a link in the show notes or you can just click the audible banner at soundmindbodypodcast.com. Now, back to Sheila and her interview with Linda Gray. Okay, we're back, and we are talking to the one and only Linda Gray. Thank you. So, Linda, before the break, we were talking about, you know, your story, your journey with Dallas and becoming the actress and making it your own and then becoming a director. But what we didn't say is what was going on in your personal life during all that time where you had two children, you were flying back and forth from L.A. to Dallas, and how that affected your personal life. And you were still trying to be a a mother and making meals on the weekends to go for the whole week or two that you were gone. So that was extremely... Yeah, that was was a tough period for me because... um, my husband was not thrilled about me uh, acting. Uh, his comment was, "Why don't you become an actor when the children are in college?" Oh, yeah. So that was that was his philosophy, and I understood his philosophy. And I also um, we had moved to the country. Uh, he was um, the art director at Warner Brothers Records, but he really oh. wanted to be a cowboy. So. I was a city girl, and kind of reluctantly, I thought I thought we were going to move out there and get a horse and go out on the weekends with the kids. <laughs> and, and they kept getting more and more and more. And so, you know, he convinced me to move out there, and the kids were little. And um, so I thought, okay. So creatively, I loved it because I was the one that got to help design the house. Oh, great. And so that took the onus uh, out of the, the fact that we were going to move clear, right. away from all my friends. You had a project, blah, blah, blah. a creative yeah, kind of project. And I just, the curiosity kicked in and I was like, how do you build a house? Where do you, what do you do here? How do you do this? Okay. And I mean, some of the ideas are fabulous to this day. So I'll send you some pictures of the house. It's oh, be- it's love to see it. <laughs> it's beautiful. So anyway, um, so it was, you know, when I, I was doing these things, the series with Norman and Norman Lear and on and on and on. 
And then I went, when I got Dallas, it was supposed to shoot in Los Angeles. Oh. And then we got a call saying, um, the good news is you're going to shoot it. You got the job. Bad news is you're going to shoot it in Dallas, Texas. Ah. Uh. And it wasn't for a week or two. It was two months Oh my God! And it was five, the first five episodes. It was long before the the term miniseries or anything like that. It was uh-huh. five. We were hired, unemployed actors hired for five episodes. Oh, in really? Nineteen seventy-eight. So five episodes at a time. They did. No, that was just. It was. It was. That was the first. That contract. was kind of like the first uh, go around to see if anybody liked these okay. crazy dysfunctional people. Right. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> which they obviously loved. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was not flying back and forth and, and cooking on the weekends. It was, oh my God, I'm gone for two months. Oh my gosh. How had, did you address that it, with your husband? <laughs> well, it was, it was husband and kids. Yeah. And uh, I live on three acres and we had horses. Oh my gosh. And chickens and dogs and cats and a goat. And I mean, mm-hmm. we had all, you know, I was kind of like a farm girl. From the yeah. City. They, he took the city girl and <laughs> threw her in the country. And I thought, oh God! So, but I loved it. Yeah, I loved it sounds like Walters. wonderful. It was actually, so much fun. Um, but I thought, oh boy, here we go. So I, before Martha Stewart, I became um, Martha Stewart, <laughs> and, and I did casseroles and fi- you know, stuffed the freezer. God forbid they should not have you know any food, and yeah. did all that. And, but I'm sure part of it was guilt, and part of it was like all this stuff leaving the kids. Uh, you know, yes. Uh, um, that was that was most challenging for me. Yeah, and we were filming in January. They were in school. So how old were they? They were um, let's see, seventy eight, uh, six and four. Oh my gosh, little, 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 and um, so it was, it was challenging for me. I was crazed, and um, so anyway, uh, I went off to Dallas, Texas. Yeah. And there was and people need to understand this that, that that was long before cell phones. Oh, yes. FaceTime, uh, right. Skype, yeah. any of that stuff that we so casually take now is that's the ordinary. Mm-hmm. We didn't have that. We had a telephone. Oh, uh, yeah. And, and you had to be at a landline and telephone yep. and it costs a lot of money to yep. call to and and it was I'd never been to Texas before. None oh, of us my had gosh. except Larry. And we were in a horrible motel and really freezing to death. It was an ice storm in Dallas. And, uh, January, yeah, it's freezing yeah, it's like, there. And I mean, it was a beautiful ice storm. The trees looked like they were, you know, Disneyland trees. It was beautiful. But it was still uh, still such a life-changing oh my gosh. process that was scary. It was scary. And I was lonely. I didn't, and I didn't know anybody. I didn't have a lot of Sue Ellen, uh, you know, I didn't know who she was. Right. And I thought, I better create this character. So the good news is that I didn't have a lot of stuff in those first five episodes. So I would hang out at Neiman Marcus. Oh, <laughs> a good place to hang out. Yeah, I'm supposed to be a very wealthy uh, Texas lady. <laughs> so I'm just going to take myself to Neiman Marcus. Oh, I love it. Oh, my God. And I walked around and... Um, I shopped. I didn't buy. I just so you, shopped. So you were getting in character. Yeah. <laughs> and I would watch the women in their shoes and their handbags. And oh. I'd go to the, um, the the salon part and I'd get my nails done one day, listen to their conversations, oh. which were extraordinary. <laughs> and um, where did they eat? And what did they dress? And I, what did they do? And... Um, then one night we had, it's a great little story. One, one night we had a big dinner thing, uh-huh. very black tie-ish. And I went in the ladies' room at the Mansion Hotel. And as I was leaving, I put on a little lipstick. I was standing at the mirror and the lady came over and she had a little Judith Lieber bag that's about this big. Yeah. It doesn't hold very much, but they're beautiful. And she opened up her bag and I looked in <laughs> quietly, <laughs> nicely, discreetly. <laughs> And in the bag was a Derringer gun <gasps> and a lipstick. Oh, my God. And that was it. And Whoa. so being a California girl, I, <gasps> this was kind of new for me. <laughs> I was like, I said, really? Now I look and I think, oh, God, what a stupid comment. Anyway, um, I looked in her bag and I said, excuse me, 
is that a gun? <laughs> <laughs> like, duh. <laughs> like, of course it's a gun. And she looked at me and she said, yes, it is. This is Texas. <laughs> And I, just, I didn't know what to do. I just put on my lipstick and left. And, oh and my I God. told you the got... producers the next day, I said, you've got to put that scene in. Oh, and, and, my God. I and love he it. didn't. But I, oh, I never have. forgot it because it, was such, it made such a funny impact well, that on just, me. You just have to keep remembering that. And that's Sue Ellen. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's brilliant. But that's how I gathered all the brilliant one, and I've got so many friends that uh, I knew I, I met back then, and they're still friends. Oh wow! Yeah, that's so. And do they live in Dallas. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, they do. Oh, that's so cool. And they were so gracious cool. and fabulous, and um, they're really wonderful people. Oh, that's so great. That is so great. So okay, let's move on to another aspect of your career, which is. Film. So when you started doing films, how different was that to doing television? Was it a lot different? Was it, you know? Not really. Film film really wasn't much different at all. You know, it was memorizing your lines and doing... Yeah. (laughs) Shooting the same type of scenes. But how did you... Did somebody... You know, because a lot of... Nowadays, a lot of actors and actresses are transitioning onto, you know, the Netflix series and this and that. But back then it was like either you were TV or you were film. So Correct. how did you go that? I, I begged. <laughs> <laughs> Again, you're like, I'm going to do that. I begged. <laughs> um, in 19, let's see, I left the show in 1989. And uh, then I did Models, Inc. But, um, oh, right. But I remember I Models, did, Inc. Yeah, Models, Inc. Yes. <laughs> and then I saw a script um, it was with uh, Stallone, Sylvester Stallone, oh. and I loved I loved the role of the maid. What and, you know on a call sheet they have like number one would be Stallone and number two is this all these other wonderful people and the maid was number twenty eight on, oh. on the call sheet and I loved her really because but she got to be kind of funny looking and uh, uh, I loved it because she wasn't. In designer clothes. Uh huh. She didn't have a husband who was a dreadful little person. And um, <laughs> she was just this independent, quirky little character. And so I went, John Landis directed. Oh. And I went to see John and I said, I want to do this role. And, and he said, Why? Why? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. So I, why do you want to be the maid? He said, Do you realize she's number 28 on the call sheet? <laughs> I see. And it's only the maid. <laughs> the Is maid. there no name? <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, no. And his wife was a wonderful costume designer. So uh, she dressed me like I I only w- was dreaming of how she would look. She looked even better than my, my dream. And I got to work with, with John Landis. Oh, cool. But I, you know... They didn't want to hire me for anything that went for most of us because we were so recognizable. Ah, and yeah. uh, you know, to this day, it's still tricky. And so, uh, what film was that? I that want to was see called it. Oscar. Oscar. Okay. <laughs> I don't come in till the very end, but it's I kind gotta of a see that now. Character. <laughs> you gotta see it. It's hysterical, um, and it, everybody was great in it. And um, but I was I was honored. I was just like, okay, great. I get to do this, and it looked pretty fun. It was I a mean, challenge, right? It was, and it was different and wonderful, and I had oh. the best time. So you know, just doing things, but you know, it wasn't easy. A lot of people think, oh, well, that's easy. Look yeah. how, f- look how famous you were and this and that and it was not and it was you know when you um we we spoke about earlier about being a huge television star at Mm. that time people think that's the ultimate and you forget that the press wants to just know every everything about you every uh things are invented and and my sister was was dying of cancer and you know they they put it um they made a horrible headline that she was dying of brain cancer oh no and and my sister said, blamed <sighs> me for telling them oh, i'm horrible. like i didn't say i didn't say anything about that and she was i mean there were moments in her in her hospital from her bed where she was just like i can't believe you told them oh my god i said i didn't tell, i didn't ever say that 
Uh, so you know, I'm mean, just to have those memories. Those moments of, are just of like really dreadful things where they things are invented because they just want some kind sensationalism. of sensationalism. Yeah, it was, it you want to sell so, some papers. So harmful and hurtful. Uh, so people don't realize that with all that, uh, the lovely things that do happen, there's some uh, negative shots that are taken uh, just because you're you're known. Yeah, and um, the, you know, I was happy that I lived a very quiet, reclusive kind of life. Yeah, because they're going to go after you anyway, no matter where you live and what kind of life you have. You know, it's you're you're. Um, kind of fodder for that. For the, yeah. So when you guy. read, see those things on the magazines, you know, do you just go, mm, I'm not, you know, I, I going there. I don't look anymore. I mean, yeah. haven't for a long, long time. Because it's, for me, it's sad. It's like, yeah. leave them alone. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, they're, they're actors and actresses for, you know, because they're talented. That's your talent. But, you know, yeah, the personal life, that doesn't give them, you know, permission to invade your personal life. So let's move on to theater, which is a whole other animal. Then you did theater and you did like the ultimate West End of London theater. (laughs) So talk about that. Tell us a good story that you have in that time period. (laughs) Well, very well, I'll tell you quick. I talk a lot, don't I? I I think you could, I could talk to you for hours, Linda. (laughs) Well, I had a wonderful man. To this day, I, I adore her. But one day she called me, um, it was a female manager, and she called me. And she said, I've got a question for you. She said, one of my other clients was just offered the role of uh, Mrs. Robinson Ooh. in the West End of London. And she said, do you think she should take it? <laughs> and I was like, so you, why are you calling me to see yeah. if she should take this? And she said, well, I don't know. I just thought, you, you know, what do you think? And I thought... That's an odd question to ask another actor. Another actor. I said, okay, if she turns it down, would you put my name on the the, the other list? <laughs> the list of the, over here are the ones that, you know. So she said, would you want to be play Mrs. Robinson? And I thought, okay, this, this lady needs a little. <laughs> yeah, really. She needs a colonic. Does a bear. Anyway. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> what is she thinking? I know. Or not thinking. Anyway, so um, that's what happened. Uh, she she, um, she put my name on the list and sent it to London. And they said, oh, no, she's too old. What? Yeah. Yeah. And to I play s- Mrs. Robinson? Yeah. And so, because they just looked at the age. Yeah, right. Uh, it was like, uh, no, watch me. <laughs> so, it's like, watch oh, me. my God, here we go again. <laughs> Take a little glimpse at that letter on my desk, and here we go again, again. And Let me again. put that in a frame. <laughs> oh, God. So uh, they finally said okay, and I went over and played Mrs. Robinson on in the West End. Oh, wonderful. Had the best time because with theater, you know, with if, if you mess up a line or you say something, you, uh, and you could say to the director, "I'd like to do it again," or yeah. "I messed up," or he says or she says to you, um, "Could you do that again?" Yeah, make it a little juicier, a little whatever, and so you get to do it again. In live theater, um, you, you're not doing that again. Yeah, right. <laughs> you, you cannot you mess it up. You just keep going. Yeah, and it's kind of like life. Wow. You know? Yeah, you, yeah. You, that's so if true. If you fall down, baby, you just get up and keep going. You know? <laughs> We're not taking two on this one. And um, so that's what I did. How exciting. And so how many fun. shows a week did you do on that? Oh, that's a that's a brutal schedule. You do eight shows a week. Really? Yeah. It's tough. Wow. It's very, I, there's no denying that, that fact. Yeah. It's eight shows. And then and all the rehearsals. For how long do you rehearse for you something rehearse like that? rehearse for, um, I think, can't quite remember, but it was about... A month, yeah. Um, it, 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 it's it's tough. I'm not, you know, yeah. It's a tough schedule because it's it, it doesn't stop. You have to be on, on, on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, wow. I is there are there any uh, videos of of that performance? No, I I don't know whether Reuters did one. I'm not sure. I'm We're not gonna sure. look that up. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but it was great fun. Did you live in, so you stayed in London for how long while that was running? Six months. Oh, wonderful. Cool. It was, it was great. And, you know, since I've done, I've done some more th- theater. But when I, I did theater in Vienna as well, and I remember playing um, the psych- 
psychiatrist in um, Agonies of God. Oh. And I remember opening night, and it was at the English-speaking theater in, in Vienna. It was gorgeous. Oh, oh my God, so beautiful. And they, breathe, they, love, they love actors. Uh-huh. They love their theater. And the first night, the royalty comes, everybody comes, and the mayor and everybody, it's opening night, it's a big deal. So um, I, as a therapist, as the psychiatrist, I had to smoke. And I had the cigarettes in my Per, in my pocket, mm-hmm. and opening night, I picked out this the whole pack of cigarettes, and the entire pack flew oh. all over the stage. Oh my god! Opening night, and I'm like, oh my god! Oh my god! But when you're trained to do that, you know you've got to pick those up because the entire audience is going to be staring at whatever at fell what, on the floor. Yeah. Okay. At, who, is that part of the? Is that part of the scene? Uh huh. Who's going to pick them up? Did she? Maybe she dropped it. I don't know. But anyway, you've got to get those things up. Yes. So I just kept talking and putting one at a time in back. And so you made. And there was my my outfit was I had just streaming of I was sweating. I was sweating. (laughs) I was so nervous. And I knew. I thought, God, there's royalty right here, first row. And oh my god, I'm picking up cigarettes off. Anyway, things happen. It's like, again, I love it. I turn it back on life. It's like, keeps okay, you sharp. Just keep going. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Pick up the things off the floor and keep going. <laughs> just keep going. Mm-hmm. So, Linda, one more thing that we wanted to, to bring up because our, my producer, Tim, just found this. He was looking up the graduate and he found that the picture, the original, you know, cover of the movie, the graduate with. Dustin Hoffman, that iconic photo of him yeah. staring at Mrs. Robinson's <laughs> leg. leg. That leg is your leg. <laughs> that leg is my leg. Yeah, yeah. Um, that would be my leg. A, a photographer friend of mine uh, called me and he said, "I need your legs," and I'm like, "What?" <laughs> and, and it's uh, so. Anyway, I'd worked with him a lot, and um, so I don't know what happened, whether the studio called it. Anyway, Dustin was not there, and Bancroft was not there. Nobody was there. And he said, okay, I just crossed the legs, stockings, la, la, la. And so I, I did it. And do you want to know how much I always paid him? How much? $25. Oh, my God. <laughs> Twelve fifty a leg, <laughs> and it hung in several dormitory rooms. <laughs> oh, several! <laughs> oh my gosh, that is iconic. <laughs> totally, that's iconic. the best way for me to put it. This is great. I love it. Tim's voice comes in. He's got and, a great voice, right? and great voice, especially at the graduate. I'm sure. Wow, I'm I blushing. Even, I'm blushing. I won't even <laughs> ask him if it was in his room over his bed. Like, mm. no, I won't. <laughs> I won't. I, I won't. I won't. <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway, the legs. Twelve fifty a leg. No, it's a bar- bargain. A leg. I think it's a bargain. A bargain. <laughs> well, let's. I want to ask you a few of the questions that we ask. Well, all the questions that we ask are all of our guests here. Oh, fun. So, part of your book, "The Road to Happiness," is always under construction. Everybody should get a copy. You talk about your health tips of how to stay, you know, how you've stayed healthy, balanced, and well. And that's one of the questions I ask is, how do you stay of sound mind and body in your life? You know, all this stuff going on and all these changes and this, you know, challenges. And how do you stay balanced and healthy and looking gorgeous? Bless you. Well, it's true. (laughs) But, you know, I I have... Very, for me anyway, it works for me. And everyone I in my mind should have whatever works for you. But m- one of my most favorite and non-negotiable things is that the first hour of the day is sacred. Oh. And don't mess with me in the first hour. And it isn't because I'm cranky, because I'm not. Uh, it's that that's the time. That phone doesn't come near my it, my my phone is in another room oh that's wonderful so you don't hear the the the, the, the things coming in yeah and no notifications or whatever those things are <laughs> and um all that noise and um i i sleep 
beautifully. Oh, that's so and, great. You know, a lot of women don't don't yeah. sleep well. I think that that's the first thing. Attend to that. Get some whatever you do. Take sleeping tea. Do something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> something. Get that sleep. Sleep is important. But that first hour is sacred. And I do not pick up the phone and go to like, oh, I wonder if somebody emailed me or oh, I got to call this one. No, my hour, that first hour. And you, I get up early and I think you have to do it. Yeah. A lot. You have to get, if you get up at eight o'clock and you're like running around, I'm late, I'm late, then your whole day kind of collapses. True. It, it kind of it collapses on itself. So I do, um, I do my meditation. Yes. And, um, you know, I... I do all that quiet stuff, and I have a gratitude journal that I just oh. love. It's that's so important, and uh, a lot of people say, "Well, that gratitude journal." I say, "Uh, uh-uh. uh, gra- gra- did you have hot water today for your? Oh. Did you take a shower? Did you have hot water? Yeah, I mean, come on, be grateful. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. For, we forget about so many things that are so important. We take you know? for granted, and, you know, I, because of the. UN work. I'm, when oh. I go to developing countries, people people don't even have any water to drink, and ah. we're so blasé about a lot of things. I find not, not negative, but we just we just forget. We forget to be grateful. So I have I do my gratitude journal. That's essential because it's like, what am I grateful for today? That's wonderful. And it's not the same every day. I, so it makes you think about. Okay, I wrote that yesterday. It's still a good thing to be grateful for, but maybe what else did you find today? And it makes you think in that direction rather than what am I worrying about today yeah, or, you no. know. And sometimes it's it's challenging, but um those are um you know, those are those are essential things that I that I do and I love to read. I think people um I remember Jim Quick. I love Jim Quick. He's the he has a podcast about the brain. Oh. And um keeping your brain active and learning and um remembering. And he said, um, readers are leaders. Ah. And I think people forget to read. You know, Warren Buffett reads forty five minutes a day, he says. And you know, I like to follow the guys that have done done it and done well, Richard Prince and people like that. And um, so those are my guys that I go to um, that stimulate my brain and my mm-hmm. thought process. And oh, that's a good book. Let me hear. It. Let me read that. And then Jim, Jim Quick teaches you how to read faster and retain. Oh, so as your brain gets older, mine, <laughs> mine, mine, <laughs> uh, it's like okay, uh, I, that, that's not acceptable. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing, brain, but you have to remember this. Watch me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know, and I force myself to remember phone numbers so I don't go right to the. Oh, to good. The thing and say, oh well, it's in my phone. I want to know that phone number. That's true. Because what if you don't have your phone? It doesn't work. Okay, so let's go on to the other questions. First of all, what is a favorite sound? <laughs> um, I. I love, well, because I live in the country, I love the birds. Oh. And especially this morning, I heard, because it's spring, I, I heard the birds. And it was magic to me. You know, I, I just love them. I and love the birds, too. It was so sweet. So part, much part of nature and the, the things that I, I just vibe to. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just love that was my that's a sound for today. <laughs> okay, I love that, that I love too. That, that I love. Makes me feel happy. It sounds cliche, but it does. No, it doesn't. It's not cliche. Not yeah. to, not to me. Okay, so what's a favorite memory of yours? And I'm sure you have many, 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 but just a favorite memory that comes to mind. Well, you know, as a mother. Uh, that's that's the biggie. Um, you, I don't think you can can compete. I can't compete with that. The memory of uh, childbirth is um, for two children is is absolutely beautiful, and th- that stays with you forever. Ah, that's it. That is so so true. The magic. Yep. Okay. Favorite place. Favorite place. I well, I love my home. I've I've turned it into a sanctuary. Oh, that's so yeah. great to hear. I mean, people who love their home—it's oh, wonderful. I love my home, and literally, I've I've nurtured it, and you know, I've lived there forty-five years. Wow, um, it's now up for sale. But 
it's okay because I've blessed it and nurtured it and it's time to move And on. where are you are going I back to? I don't know where. Come back to the city? <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh my goodness. No, but it's, but I love my home and it's, it's just this, it is my sanctuary, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, uh, I'll send you pictures. I'd love to just, see pictures. Um, uh, you know, it nurtures me and it feeds me. Yeah. And that's what I think that a lot of times we don't do. Uh, we as women, we're so busy taking care of other people and nurturing others, no matter who, their animals, other people, and, and mm-hmm. two-legged and four-legged beings. True. And we're just so... that I think we... I know, not I think, I, I know that we need to nurture ourselves more. And we forget about that. Yeah. So important. Um, okay, so the final question. Is it hard? <laughs> final question. <laughs> oh, God. I know. It's so scary. No, it's a fun one. What's the most woo-woo thing oh, you've God. ever done? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I knew it was coming. I thought, oh, she's going to ask me that woo-woo question. <laughs> I've done some weird... I warned you. <laughs> uh, I've done some, man, some really weird things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think we, a lot of us have. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's because of my curiosity. It's like, of course. Yes. You know, we have to do that. And... Um, not woo woo, but I've done some pretty inter- interesting. I won't say woo woo, but then what there was there was one kind of woo woo thing and, um, <laughs> <laughs> that I remember. I was filming Dallas, and uh, someone invited me to go to um, uh, to Oklahoma, and there was this amazing um, Native American th- and um, and you know non Native American people that were there mainly women, and we were to challenge, it was a whole weekend of challenging ourselves. Now, oh. I was in the middle of filming, so it was in the 80s. Wow. And um, so part of these things, these were like, you know, kind of outbacky things that we were supposed to do, but it was led by some wonderful people, but it was a little out there for normal people. Yeah. But for me, it was normal as heck, you know, I was just like, yeah, bring it on, let's do it. <laughs> So one of the things that you had to do was climb this telephone pole and stand on a, on a tile, like a, you know, the size of a tile. <gasps> stand there, stand there, and leap off, leap off. They put you in a harness, leap off, and go to the uh, another telephone pole over there. And it was a you know it was a test. It was like I a, don't know if I could have done that. But I stood up there and I thought, what am I doing? <laughs> What am I doing? It was too late. I was I was on oh the top of a telephone God. pole with a standing on a piece of tile, and you know you're supposed to just release the fear and, kind and of, the yeah. anxiety <laughs> and do all that. I wasn't doing so well. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> anyway, I it was the leap of faith and yeah, and all of that and letting go of inhibitions and all of that. So uh, anyway, I did it. Oh my God! And I felt. Fabulous! I just felt like free and wonderful, and there were no limits. And I was like a bird. I was just like whoosh, I flew across oh like my a trapeze gosh. artist or something. Mm-hmm. And then, I, you know, I mean, we were sp- and then we did these cleansing exercises. We, you know, we did all the yeah the, the uh, traditional things. And I got back to Texas on <laughs> Sunday night, <laughs> and I thought. I can't tell anybody what I've just done. I could have killed myself. Oh my god! Or you know, broken something or whatever. But did it bother me? Nope. No. Nope. I just went on. I said, "I'm alive. I'm well, and I can be Sue Ellen tomorrow morning." But right oh now, god. I'm I'm this very. <laughs> and you knew in yourself that you did it. I did. I felt like a. I felt like an eagle. Oh my god! Flying, gosh. and I thought. Sue Ellen didn't do this. She wouldn't do this. She'd be terrified to get her hair messed up or something. <laughs> right. So I thought, uh-huh, this is what I need. That's what my life is like. I think women need balance. Not as weird as I do, but to go from Sue Ellen to a trapeze artist flying like an eagle through the air, those are those are the things that I loved to do. Yeah. But- and I still love them. So. Oh, that's so wonderful. That makes you... So unique and special and inspiring to people. That, I don't want them to sort of do those things, but you asked well, me some Well, I things. love that you have this attitude about life, and that's what makes you so vibrant and so, like, so what's next for you? Every, everything. You know, people say, well, aren't you, you're, you're at that age where you should be retiring. I'm like, 
<laughs> who are you? <laughs> and who are you to tell me what to do? Yeah, anyway. watch me. No. <laughs> I, I it's keep it. saying that it's your theme. It's my theme. <laughs> I'm doing um, a little film um, uh, with Eric Roberts. Oh my gosh! And uh, he, it's very dysfunctional. I'm going shopping at Walmart for my clothes. Oh my god! <laughs> Shh! Don't tell anybody. <laughs> <gasps> I, I can't love wait. It. I can't oh my wait. god! Are you going to go in like incognito? No. You're not? Going, probably baseball hat and glasses. That okay, okay. <laughs> but I'm like, so excited. And we're very bad. I, I'm a, a waitress in a coffee shop. I, I love, love it. Love oh, it. cool. Oh, so my gosh. I like, can't wait okay, to watch bring this. bring it on. Bring that on. And then another friend is writing a, a, little, a little film. So I'll be in that. And oh, I'm excited. Wow. That is so I'm really, cool. Really, really excited. So just, I'm just it's all open. I don't know. I'll probably produce something and... I got the rights to a book, so I'm excited about that. Well, when are we going to see the 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 book become a movie? I swear no, to God, no. your book could be a movie. The <laughs> your life, you. your life story. Well, I don't, I don't know. It, I'll it wait was for that. Lovely. That's kind of like been, you know, I did it. Next, yeah, you, you know. did it. Next, yes, yeah, something else. Yeah. Well, Linda. We'll be following you, and I want to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming out here and being with us today. This has been absolutely a wonderful, and maybe, it, you know, we can have you back when you have your movie come out. I'd love to. Perfect. I'd love to do that. You've been lovely to, you know, just speak with. I love being on your podcast. Thank you. Well, that's it for this episode. So what's the most woo-woo thing you've ever done? Let us know. Send us an email or a voice memo to podcast at soundmindbodypodcast.com. And thanks for listening. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you like the podcast, give us a review on iTunes. It really helps new listeners find us. Thank you to our producer, Tim Edwards, and the Inbound Podcasting Network. Get in touch. I'm on Instagram at soundmindbodypodcast and on Twitter at Sheila Melody one Or find us on Facebook or the web. Just search for Sound Mind Body Podcast. I'm Sheila Melody. Join us next week as we explore, enlighten, and evolve. <laughs>